This session of Silt Performer Training covers the basics of the new browser-driven load testing feature. Topics included in this training are project outline, model script, adding a verification, try script, and TrueLog Explorer. To use the browser-driven load testing feature in Silt Performer, create a new project and choose Web Browser-Driven AJAX Application Type. This will load Silt Performer with the correct application profile for the browser application recorder. To begin a new recording, click the Model Script button. The option to record should be selected already, and if the correct project type was chosen when creating the project, the correct application profile should be loaded. So enter the URL of the application and click OK. The main difference between a standard protocol level recording and the BDLT feature is the use of the browser application during record. The browser application is a custom built web browser which contains a subset of Internet Explorer technology. The browser application contains the usual functionality expected from a web browser including the forward and back buttons, a reload button and the stop button. You will also notice that the browser application is capable of opening multiple tabs within its main window. This is an important part of its pop-up support. The Silt Performer Recorder contains the same functionality as protocol level support. On the left, the application currently being recorded is listed. We can also see the ability to pause a recording or stop it altogether. We can add custom timers to our script to encapsulate a group of actions into one timer measurement. And we can add comments, a useful feature for matching scripted function to the action which caused them. The panel on the right is the record window and all recorded functions will be listed here. It is also possible to start, pause and stop recording from here. The panel at the bottom is the locator spy. This is the important part of Silt Performer's ability to recognize and interact with the browser's document object model. When pause break is pressed, the DOM hierarchy will be loaded here. On the right are the options to validate, which is used to validate acceptable locator strings, add verification button, and the enable tracking button. When the application under test is loaded, we can see straight away how the recorder scripts two functions, the browser start function and the browser navigate function. Always ensure the enable tracking button is selected as this activates the tracker to identify each object on the page. The tracker can see each of the individual HTML objects in the DOM and indicates this by surrounding the object with a green box. The recorder captures events against the recognized objects such as mouse clicks and text being entered. When entering text into a field, a browser set text function is scripted. This function has two parameters, a locator string to find the object during replay and the input string which is the text to be entered. The recorder can detect when a password is being entered and scripts a different function for this. The browser set password. The main feature of this function is that it hides the password. Clicking the login button scripts a browser button select and so on. I'm currently hovering the mouse over the automobile instant quote text and the tracker has highlighted this object in green. By pressing the pause break button on the keyboard, I can load the complete DOM hierarchy for the object in question. The locator spy also loads a locator string to use to identify this object when the recorder scripts a function to interact with it. On the right hand side, the DOM property panel is shown. This panel contains all of the available properties and their values for the DOM object being interacted with. Bear in mind that this list of properties and their values can change depending on the state of the object, for example, whether it is active or inactive. To add a verification, just click on the Add Verification button when an object is loaded in the Locator Spy. This loads the Verification Wizard dialog with the specific options available for that object. The Locator String is preloaded and the combo box is already loaded with all of the available properties which you can verify against. It is important to note that not all properties are suitable to use as verification criteria. In this example it would not be suitable to use the tab index property as this does not tell, tell us anything about the actual state of the object that we would want to know. You can also choose whether you want to take case sensitivity in the account or whether to ignore white space. Lastly, set the severity of the verification failure event. Notice on the right how the browser verify property function has been scripted. I'm going to progress through the application to highlight another feature of the BDLT functionality. 
On the Make and Model section of the application, the drop-down combo controls are populated on the fly using Ajax. During a load test, this control may take longer to populate since the server is under heavy load. However, the browser application is able to detect when Ajax is in use and apply synchronization to it. In other words, it waits for a specified timeout period and can detect when the response is complete. OK, now I will complete the scenario and log out of the application. I then click on the stop button and save the recording. The most obvious thing about BDLT is that the scripts produced from recording are much shorter than HTTP protocol level recordings. The entire recording consists of only 40 functions, however protocol level this script may have been hundreds of lines long and much more complex to work with. So let's run a try script. The options for try script include the profile drop down for selecting which profile to use for replay and the edit profile button to add a common replay setting such as the type of browser you want to emulate during replay. When visible client is checked, the browser application is launched so the replay is visible. When unchecked, it runs in an invisible mode. Step-by-step -step execution gives the user more control for debugging purposes and slows down the replay. You will notice that this replay was very fast. Even though the script contains think times, these are not implemented during a try script. You can enable step-by-step -step execution to slow the replay down if needed, or alternatively, insert a wait statement. This recording replayed without any errors and no customizations or parameterizations were required this time. To open the TrueLog Explorer, right-click on the script and choose Explore Recent Try Script TrueLog. The individual API nodes of the TrueLog contain screenshots of the browser application taken when the function call completed. The Source tab and Source Differences tabs are not available in BDLT mode because they rely on access to the page's source code to work. Other features like adding verifications and parsing are no longer possible through the TrueLog Explorer in BDLT mode. However, features like adding comments and adding custom timers are still available by right-clicking on the API node and choosing the relevant option from the context menu. This concludes the browser-driven load testing basics training.